In this video, we'll take you through creating your first environment light with Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. Environment lights can be shot on location and they let you integrate a 3D object into a photograph with correct lighting. We start from a set of photos taken with a 360 camera. If you don't have a 360 camera, you can download the files used in this video and work with those. I'm using a Ricoh Theta camera, but the principles should apply to other cameras as well. What's most important is that you shoot multiple bracketed photos. Bracketed photos means each photo is more exposed than the last one. This lets Sampler rebuild the light intensity, as it's impossible to capture accurate lighting with just a single photo. To get your brackets to work in Sampler, they need to use the same exposure value offset. To keep it simple, you start from an underexposed photo with a very short shutter time and double the shutter time for each next bracket. So starting from 1 25,000th, going to 1 12,500th, 1 6,400th, and so forth. With the Theta camera, I keep it simple and have a set of brackets that works for most cases. You'll have to adjust this if you switch between night and day settings. Once you're ready with shooting, transfer all the bracketed photos to your computer and group them per location set. I'm using JPEG files instead of RAW. The quality is slightly less, but it's easier and less work to use. Now, let's get started with Sampler. We'll create a new project. Then, in the project window, I'll click the plus next to environment lights and pick new environment light. This creates a new light resource that works a bit different than a material. We'll start by bringing our photos in. I'll be using an outdoor set to start. Drag and drop all photos into the empty layer stack on the right. Sampler brings up a template window suggesting you to use the HDR merge template. This does exactly what we want, so click OK. After some calculations, the photos are merged and we can see something happening to our 3D view. With environment lights, you'll want to customize the 3D view a bit better to understand the lighting. Find the Viewer Settings in the lower left corner. Click it and scroll down to the Environment Visibility setting and turn that on. Now you can see your environment in the background. It might feel very close up, so scroll down to the Field of View setting and increase it. Somewhere above 90 degrees, you start to get a good overview. Lastly, the plane mesh is not so great for seeing lighting. If you scroll up again, you'll find a few other meshes to choose from. The preview sphere mesh works quite well for checking environment lights. Now we can start tweaking our environment with filters. Let's check out the HDR merge layer first. It has two settings. The input exposure delta tells Sampler the difference in light between each bracket. One EV means the light halves between each photo, like we set it up. If you take a different approach with your camera, you'll have to calculate the EV offset yourself and adjust this setting. The output auto exposure does a good job most of the time. It tries to find a good balance for you. The offset slider below lets you make adjustments to the overall exposure of the image. It's best to use this so that the environment in the background looks correctly exposed, not over bright or too dark. First up, I want to adjust the color temperature a bit. This photo was taken at 5000 K and it should be a bit warmer. If you hide the viewer settings, you'll see the asset window. In the search bar, type temp, and you should see the color temperature filter show up. Drag the icon onto the top of the layer stack. This adds a new filter with new settings. You can adjust the color temperature warmer or colder. This sunset photo can do with being a bit warmer. We'll go for minus 0 0.17. You should notice that the light from the sun seems to be missing a bit. That's because the sun is so bright, it's not possible to capture its full intensity with brackets and a 360 camera. No problem, we can fix that in Sampler. Let's add another filter, but use the quick filter button above your layer stack. There it shows you all filters currently available. We'll choose Sphere Light. As soon as you add it, the 2D view opens up next to the 3D. You can see a floating white disc with a circular handle in the middle. Let's drag that onto the sun. It's hard to tell exactly where the sun is, so a trick is to open up the viewer settings, find the environment intensity, and reduce it a lot while the sun is in view. Now you can move the sphere light in 2D while viewing it in 3D. 
you'll see that the sphere, it blocks light rather than emit it. So in the settings of the filter, find the sphere radius and reduce it. Smaller than 0.1 is good. The smaller, the sharper the shadows will be. Above that, the exposure control controls the intensity of the light. With this setting, we can fake an intense sun. Radius and exposure are linked, so you have to tweak both. It helps to set the environment intensity back to zero. Then look at your mesh and try to get the light's exposure high enough so it just doesn't start burning out on your mesh. You can turn on another setting to help judge the lighting intensity. Instead of viewer settings, open the shader settings below it. There's a checkbox for shadows that draws some simple real-time shadows for your brightest light. It's not perfect ray trace quality, but helps judge the overall look. So we ended up with a radius of 0.05 and an exposure of 13.2. All that's left is to tweak the temperature to match that warm sunset color. 5,400 Kelvin looks good. We're getting closer. If you look down, you can see the tripod the camera was sitting on. Ideally, this is removed to not affect our light. There's a filter for this called Nadir Patch. Once added, you can see it adds two squares on the floor. It works a bit like a clone stamp that's constrained to the floor. You just move the source patch around to find a good match for the ground around the tripod. Again, use both 2D and 3D view to align it properly. For an irregular floor like this gravel, it's pretty easy to get right. There are a few settings to play with, like patch hardness that help in some cases. Once you're happy, make sure to turn off Show Frames Helper to disable the preview helpers so they don't show up in the final result. Finally, I think my camera and tripod weren't exactly level, so the horizon is off ever so slightly. To fix this, I'll add the Straighten Horizon filter. This lets me set two points on the horizon, and Sampler will straighten things based on the line between them. They're hard to set at first because the image moves while I try to adjust the points. To get around this, there's a drop down at the top right of the 2D view. If you choose Layer Inputs here, it shows the result of the previous filter instead of the current filter. It lets me find those exact horizon points. You can check for yourself afterwards by toggling filter visibility with the eye icon next to each filter. And our environment light is done. Let's name it by right-clicking and choosing Rename. Then we'll save our project in case we need to come back to it. Now, we have two ways to use it outside of Sampler. For both methods, click the Share icon in the top right. If you're using Substance 3D Stager or Painter, you can send it the single click using the Send To functionality. Inside Stager, you can then use the environment to integrate an object into a regular photograph taken on the same location. If you want to use the environment elsewhere, click the Export As button instead. Make sure you've named it, choose a path, and change the format to EXR. Right now, EXR is the best format for light environments. You might get incorrect results with other file types. Just click Export and your file is written to disk, ready for use elsewhere. And that's all there is to it. Go out and have some fun now.